our Messiah was betrayed, but not broken. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This is part number two, this five part series, as we look at Jesus as our Messiah, the one that the Lord has given to us. And we're looking at the evidence to Christ being Messiah in the book of Psalms. This is kind of a part two. If you haven't checked out the previous study, make sure you do that because we know now that Jesus was betrayed, but he was not broken. Before we get into it, I wanna remind you, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel. Make sure you like the video so other folks can find it. And please check us out online at changeministry.org. There's so much more. Study resources, Bible studies, recipes, a whole lot more, and we hope you enjoy it. When we look in the book of Psalms, Again, we see psalms of praise, we see psalms of reflection, we see psalms of victory, but we also now hopefully see psalms of prophecy. God's way of cueing in to us that he's going to give his son and Jesus letting us know I'm going to come. And in that union of love, offering himself now, we've got a chance at eternal life. When you read in Psalm 41 and verse number nine, where Psalmist says, yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. Again, on the one set, speaking prophetically, and now it's fulfilled in the life of Christ. Tragically, he is betrayed. Christ is betrayed. According to John chapter 13, he's betrayed by one of his best friends, one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot. This again, showing us that the odds of someone else possibly filling this role to have been or to be the Messiah and then to be portrayed by one of their best friends. Nobody else fits the bill, unfortunately, but also at the same time, providentially to verify that Jesus Christ, we know he's the Christ because of the cross he had to bear at the hands of his betrayer, Judas. Another evidence that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. It says, Psalm 118, verse 22, the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner. So this is not just speaking to a rejection, but this is saying that the rejection will come at the hands of those who actually built this edifice, those who are in a position of leadership, those who are a part of, of, of what should be accepting this stone, the builders are gonna reject it for its construction. In John chapter 19, verse six, it says that the chief priests, the priest of whom? The priest of God, the priest of God and his people would be the ones responsible for rejecting the savior who is both the son of God and the savior of the people that they are priests of. Did that all, I know it won't make sense, but do you see the evidence that the leaders of the people of God were prophesied to be the ones who would reject the very sacrifice, the son of God. But even in this betrayal, Christ literally was not broken. Here in Psalm 34, verse 20, he keepeth all his bones, not one of them is broken. Again, the Psalm is speaking poetically of how God will keep him and how God keeps his people but it actually is fulfilled in the life of Christ. In John chapter 19, verse 31 to 32, that's where we see that when Jesus finally gave up the ghost, when he finally dies, the two thieves are on the side of him and they did not want them to be up to break the Sabbath. So to hasten their demise and their execution, they break the legs of both thieves. But by the time they get to Christ, he's already expired. So they do not break his bones. Jesus was betrayed, but not broken meaning that the, the structure, the bones, the skeletal structure of our salvation is intact. The sacrifice is complete. The sacrifice is offered. Therefore, the sacrifice is accepted. Christ is our righteousness. He is my righteousness. He is your righteousness. He's the one that we stand on to cash in uh, eternal glory with God. Brothers and sisters, cash that check today receive jesus today and know that, that we don't have to look to anyone else to come and don't look back in the mirror because all you'll see is your past and your mistakes but look at the messiah not the mirror the messiah and when we see him we don't just see a love divine we see a love delivered a love complete